We are talking about the acts of the church. And I've, we have seen you know, a lot of central themes coming through in the book of Acts. Today we are also talking about the primary mandate that God has given humanity. And how we can see faith right from the beginning where faith is not just the substance of things hoped for as if just, just to be saved from hell. As I'm saved by grace by when I believe in my heart, I will be saved. I will become a child of God. Yes, for those who believe, they will be saved. And for those who walk by faith, yes, they will overcome the world. 1 John 5. And the righteous will walk by faith. And God will be pleased by faith, with faith. But at the end of the day, faith is not just a tool to get away from sin, to get away from hell, to be set free from that what is flesh. But it was from the beginning something that God wanted from every human being before the fall of man. Faith that God is just awesome. Even though, even if I don't understand what he is doing, I will believe he's awesome. I will believe he knows what he is doing. So, the faith that Adam and Eve supposed to have had, when the enemy came at the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the whole thing was to put a question mark behind. Why did God say this? Did God indeed say it? This and this and this and this. Why did he say that? Put, let's put a question mark behind faith that is supposed to be like just pure, innocent faith. God said it. I believe it. That settles it, according to D.L. Moody, saying that he had. And it sounds so unlogic. Why can we eat of every tree, but except for this one tree? I mean, come on. What? There's no logic. I cannot see the logic behind that. Why we are not allowed to eat from this tree? It's not logical. And Eve saw that the fruit was good. But in the fall of man, they had to have faith that my father is just good. Even though I don't understand the things, I don't understand what is he saying. Why is he saying it? Why is he saying that I'm not allowed to eat from this? Still, I will stand with him. And God in the Garden of Eden wanted that from humanity. He wanted it from Adam and Eve. And in that innocence, he wanted them to walk with him. As he was in the cool of the day, he was there to walk with Adam and Eve. To walk with them through the garden. And the way he find them, no. They saw certain things. They already had issues. They already had issues. They already had to hide. When we have issues, we are hiding certain things in ourselves even. Even in things that we will not admit. We are hiding it in our soul. In some other box we put it somewhere and we don't even think we are guilty of certain things. Or when we feel guilty, we put certain things in a certain place here yeah, in our head, in our soul. And it's some complicated, confusing life. Instead of having a genuine through life with God where I just walk with my father I walk with Christ my hero, my best friend my role model and I call that life oh. so that's the mandate to walk with him now we see faith is being sure of things that we hope for certain things that we do not see we see that in Hebrews 11 Verse 1, and with my day words for this whole week was Hebrews 11, 12, and 13, and I just felt God is putting an emphasis on this as part of the series that we are doing of how we are supposed to walk as the New Testament church coming into the place to be ready for revival, for God to move, come back to the primary mandate that God has given us. And we see in Genesis 1, God blessed them. God blessed them, Genesis 1, verse 28, and said to them, 
be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over it, reign over it, reign over it. Five facets. God blessed you for a purpose. You're not just blessed to be blessed. You are blessed to be a blessing, but how can you be a blessing by running in the mandate that God has given you? So if you want to be a blessing, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over it. That's the way you're going to be a blessing to somebody else, by being obedient to God. Because when you obey God, you are a blessing. When you obey God, you're going to be a blessing. Finish. It's going to be like that. Now interesting that we see in Hebrews 11, and 12, that there's five examples used according to those five facets of the mandate by Paul who wrote this letter, we believe. And we can look at that. Now, we said already verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. Eve does not see the logic, does not see the logic why God would say, don't eat from this tree. Satan, the, 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 the snake, is giving her some logical explanations. And now she can see some logical explanations. And based on that, we will eat from the tree. So if we want in our life some logical explanations of everything, you are in a wrong place you are standing at the wrong place where the snake can speak very clearly to you but the voice of the snakes is supposed to be very <laughs> like that and not clear but the voice of god is supposed to be clear in your spirit and in your mind amen but then don't stand at a place where everything is about reasoning and you will go for it if you can understand it. You will, can, will go for it when it makes sense. No. There's a faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let's go with verse 5. Talking about first how Abel brought an offering unto the Lord. More excellent sacrifice than Cain because he brought an excellent offering in an accurate way, in the way we, God wants to be worshipped, and that is through the blood. Because utterly it will be, at the end of the day, it must be through the blood of Christ that we enter. Enter with boldness through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. You with me? But, looking then at the five facets of the mandate, at verse 5 it says, By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God has taken him. For before he was taken, he had the testimony that he pleased God. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Verse 6. That was the first man. Be fruitful. There was a fruitfulness. You can go on. There was a fruitfulness in all the facets because there was a flow between heaven and earth. And fruitfulness does not, first of all, mean you need to have 100 children. Fruitfulness means there's an intimacy between heaven and earth because of your life. There's an intimacy because you can pray on earth as it is in heaven. And it makes sense. On earth as it is in heaven. Because there's a fruitfulness coming forth through you. The greatest commandment with this place of intimacy to be fruitful Greatest command, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. God is giving us, amen. The first commandment is to put you in line, ready for the first facet of your mandate here on earth. To be fruitful, according to God's definition of fruitfulness. You are fruitful means you are ready to receive that what is from heaven. Mary said, let it be done to me according to your word. I'm ready. I will be fruitful. I am positioned in fruitfulness to receive the seed from heaven. 
I'm positioned in an accurate place in the right way to receive not the seed of rubbish, not the seed of criticism, not the seed of judgment, not the seed of religion. I will not position myself to be fruitful to multiply a lot of rubbish in the name of religion, a lot of rubbish in the name of judgment or criticism or critical spirit or whatever it will be, or compromise. No, I've positioned myself in such a way through the grace of God according to the man that God has given me, that I'm ready to receive what is coming from heaven. I'm ready to respond towards heaven. Fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. Hello? You with me? We see that. This man, and in Genesis he says, and this man, he walked with God for 300, re- 300 years, and then one day he was not there anymore. You know, it's like this movies. And he's gone. He was there and he wasn't there. Because there was such an open heaven over him. He was just earth and heaven. He was just there. He was so in a place of fruitfulness. It was just one day he wasn't there anymore. Psh, didn't even go through death into heaven. Because there's this absolute eternal life that he walked into. And that is knowing God. Amen? John 17, to know God, that is eternal life. Okay, that's the first one. That's by faith. By faith he walked. Then we see the next one. Verse 7. By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. What are we talking about? There's a fruit that must come forth. Why the second commandment equal to the greatest? You shall love your neighbor as yourself, that is unselfishly seeking the best or higher good for others. Why are we talking about that? What was the second one? First one was be fruitful. Second one was, second point in the mandate, multiply. So in the second point, what happened? Multiplication, the enemy organized that. Of an ungodly generation, mocking God, generation with just rubbish in it, with sickness in it, soul, everything, where God said, he was, what's the word? He was jammer at the means gemaakt. He was, sorry, is that the word? That he made men. And, but he found a man. And the word of God in Genesis says, but there was a man, Noah, he walked with God. God was looking for Adam and Eve to walk with them through the garden. But they had issues and already were hiding. He found a man that was walking with him in such a fruitfulness that just one day he just took him to walk further in heaven. Then second point, multiply. There's a lot of rubbish on the earth. God says, I'm going to wipe away everything. But there's a man that's walking with me, Noah, and his family. And this man that was walking with him, God built a generation and said, I will build a godly generation. I will build a godly generation with this man and his descendants. Are you with me? This is to multiply. Then we will go into the third one. In verse 8. By faith Abram obeyed when he was called to go out of the place which he would receive, etc., etc. You know the whole story is by faith. Every next verse, by faith, he did this, Sarah did this, by faith. And this was what? The third facet of the command of the main mandate for man. And that was, fill the earth. Fill the earth. Proclaim the good message with the feet that brings the word and take possession of the earth. That is you today. Yeah, it's not, you must cross the Jordan somewhere and go and live in Canaan. What is the Canaan? that you need to take possession of. What is the 
Jordan that you need to cross. It's where you go with the word of God over that Jordan. If you cannot go with the word of God through the Jordan, you will be crushed by the enemy. The giants will kill you. But if you can, like Joshua and Caleb, say, God has given us the place. According to God's promises, these giants, they are our food. We will be strengthened by the intimidation. We will be strengthened by the things that we need to face. We will be strengthened by it. Because God said, this is our destiny. If you cannot go across and cross the Jordan with a word of God in your heart, you will not take possession of your inheritance. It's impossible. You will die in Canaan. Maybe you lived in the desert by God's grace. But in Canaan, when you go into Canaan without the word of God, you will die. You could go based on the word of God to Moses out of Egypt, through the Red Sea, into the desert. But beware, if you will go from the desert through the Jordan to Canaan, without the word of God, you will die in Canaan. Your Canaan will become your curse. The blessing, the inheritance that God has for you can become your curse if you don't go with the word of God in it. Hello? Boldly with faith. So, great commandment, great commission, I actually think. To me, all authority is given in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Go into the nations. Fill the earth with what? With your opinion? No. With your money? No. With your business? No. If it's something like that and businesses will be a platform, let it be. But fill the earth with your prayer, with your faith, with your declarations into the nations, especially in a season like this. Make sure that you are filling the earth with your faith, with what you pray. Don't walk in a place of selfishness, but walk in the mandate while God has placed you on earth. He blessed you to be a blessing. There's blessing in your hand that does not belong to you. Don't steal it from the nations. Don't steal it from Bluefontaine. Don't steal it from your family. Don't steal it from your children or the next generation or the schools. So don't steal it. Don't be a thief. There's blessing in your hand. There's blessing in your mouth, in your faith and in your heart, in how you see things and in the revelations God has given you. Speak it out. Open your mouth and speak it forth into the nation and into the cities. Hello? Senor, I will not be a thief. No. But God has blessed me to be a blessing. So there's blessing in me that's not for me. I'm blessed with a purpose. And in that mandate I'm running, I'm fruitful to receive whatever is coming from heaven so that it can multiply 30, 60, 100 fold for me. No. You will suffocate in your harvest. It's not for you. But from that fruitfulness, hello, it will multiply 30, 60, 100 fold for others, for others. As you love, as I love you and you love me, from this place of fruitfulness, multiplication of this love that is poured out in your heart by the Holy Spirit, Romans 5, 5, hey? That love will multiply on earth because... They will see that God loves them as they see how you love them. And how you are content with yourself. Not forking in fear, anxiety and all these other chachas the whole day. But knowing I am loved by my God. How can I not love myself if my God loves me? Is your God making a mistake by loving you? If you believe so, then don't love yourself, please. But if he decided that somebody like you need to be loved and he wants to love you, you better love yourself. If your heart is with God's heart, then you will love yourself with a pure, godly, beautiful, holy love. You need to do that so that you can be that channel to bring his love to others. Because if this is a 
love where there's just a lot of struggles and issues. The love for people will always have issues. You will always be hurt by people. You will all be disappointed. There will always be some or other thing with people that you have. In how you open up your heart and your heart is with them or not with them and you love them, you don't love them, you offended and, and, and got hurt. And what's the problem? The problem is how you love yourself. And how you become secure in how he loves you and you love him. Come into that place of being secure. Amen. Be fruitful. Multiply. And then fill the earth with what God has for you. You don't know. I don't have an international ministry. Sorry. Rubbish. God commanded you to fill the earth. So with your prayer, you will not think just about yourself. You're not led by the Spirit if you only pray for yourself. But put it out there. Put it out there. Decide as you walk from this place, I will have impact in the nations. I will have an impact in this nation. Things will change and I will be part of the change for this whole nation and for this city and for wherever you believe God is telling you and, and showing you to pray for your prayer will have impact and that's what you believe and so it will be because God said fill the earth and the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord scripture says and the glory of the Lord is through your life God's glory on your life and for the anointing that's on your life when you pray when you believe when you speak forth on that word the Holy Spirit is taking the word but the Holy Spirit will always take the word God said, let there be light, and the Holy Spirit took it and phew. God said, and the Holy Spirit took it and phew. But without God saying, the Holy Spirit was just hovering over the waters. Just hovering over the waters. Just hovering over the waters. Waiting for the church to speak forth. Because the Holy Spirit will only react on the word of God. The Holy Spirit is only faithful to the word of God. Are you with me? That you can speak, I can speak, we can speak, all the issues. And, and even people in churches and the church, sometimes some guys in this season could speak fear. And that demon of fear is waiting for that man of God to speak fear so that he can take the word of fear and put it in the heart of other people. Hello? So the enemy with all... So many demonic strongholds are waiting, waiting for the children of God and people to speak certain words. To go with that word. And to find a place to live. To find a place of refuge, this demon, in somebody's life. To become a temple for that demon. But you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is waiting in his temple, in you, that you will open your mouth and speak forth the word so that he can go and take that word and let it be fruitful 30, 60, 100, 40, half it's in Antanana River, in this place, in that place, in Cairo. If you have the faith that God can do it, otherwise just, let's just carry on and wara wara. No, you didn't wara wara yesterday, I'm just saying. Are you with me? Be that agent of change. The Holy Spirit is waiting on you. You say you are waiting on God. Some of us. Some of us just in the past. Not anymore. We're just carrying on. No, we will wait on God. But the waiting on God is just to see how God is waiting on us. <laughs> are you with me? He's ready. He's ready to move. But he's waiting for the church. He's waiting for you to become silent. Shh. Be still and know that I'm God. Shh. Be silent before the Lord. Shh. Wait on me. And wait on me. What does it mean? And this moment that your focus can be totally on him. God is ready with you. But the waiting is to get compass. Is that the word? In line. So that everything is in line. So that God can move where he will get the glory and he will build what he wants to build in and through your life. Amen. God's going to help us fill the earth with who he is. Amen. The children of God needs to go. 
go, go, go where they need to be. And God will use them in a mighty way. Like we said, heaven and earth, everything will be shaken. Fill the earth with a lot of rubbish. That's what happened. And all the chamorts, the rubbish, what humanity brought on earth. Everything must be shaken. Everything that can be shaken must be shaken in the heavenly and on earth. So that that what is unshakable will stay and will remain. And that is you and me, the church of Christ who built their house on the rock. The rock, the knowledge of who God is. Build your house on the rock so that in this season, more and more and more and more, when everything will be shaken, God can brag about you. Now look at my house, how it's built on the rock. Where, where's your house, God? Look at my children. Look at my children. They are my house. Look at my nation. They, they are the house. I'm going to live among them. They are the dream. They are building my dream house. Hello? So God, tonight, tomorrow, shake everything out of my life. What is not from you would help me not to waste another day of just carrying on. No. But let my life be according to your will. Amen? And fill this piece of earth and the earth there where I'm moving with who you are. Let your glory come through. Boldly with faith. Go make disciples. You go and make them. Make them. Make them. Make them follow me. Make them people that will follow me. God's going to do the work. Yes. But you will better go because God commanded you to go. And then he will be with you. Make disciples. Baptize them. Teach them to obey. And see. And see. And see. And see. I will be with you till the end of the age. It says in that scripture. You will see God in an amazing way. Not just, and even more, you will see miracles all over the earth in, I cannot say freaky ways, because God says the work that I do, you will do, and even greater works you will do. John fourteen twelve. I know that's old news, you know that scripture. But still, and we did not see that yet on earth, but we will see it on earth. It needs to be fulfilled. Can you be that agent? Can you pray for somebody just around the corner? Just so by the way around the corner. Can you pray for somebody? And say, God, those guys in Universitas Hospital that, that's really going through a certain thing now. Where the people are struggling in that hospital. Everything. God, let your presence be in that place. How can I pray that in a vast hospital, the presence of God will be so in that place? I'm going to walk there one day, just see what's happening. I'm going to find out what's happening. Is there people with uh, the corona rubbies or, or not? And you're going to find out what's happening. You're going to start to pray for the, for the medical staff. You're going to pray for the people that are, that are there, that will be protected. We pray that you pray that they will do an excellent job. We pray that their families will be, will be protected. And nobody will fear. Hello, people will not judge others and if there's not enough medicine or Every, all the stuff that is necessary. And suddenly, if you put your heart to be open towards Universitas Hospital, you won't believe it. But God will give you a lot of things. And the kids with the cancer on the one level, and, and the patients and, and the staff in that place, He will speak to you if you are willing to focus your heart in prayer a little bit on that hospital. Where, where will you be able to let your heart go to so that your, through your life, the earth, that hospital can be filled with his presence. That place can be filled with his presence. That orphanage, that street kids, hello, that school will be filled. You look and you find out the, what schools are there in the Wetzlorp. And you start to pray for those three schools. 
You started to pray. Nobody knows it. But you just started to bring these three schools with these 1,314 kids. God, this, these 1,314 kids, let your presence be there. Let them have dreams about you. Protect them. Help them to honor their parents. Help them not to lose heart. Help them to have faith in you. Help them not to say they cannot be a Christian God because look at what he's doing in, on this earth. Help them not to be deceived. Help them to, to experience you in a unique way. Help the church to be relevant in those schools. Help the children of God, the fathers and the ma <coughs> mothers, to give their children perspective. Help them. You start to pray for those three schools in the door. You can carry on quite a while. And when you start to speak, at the end of the day, you will be a prophet to those three schools. You will phone them and you will have the prophetic word of God for them. And things can start to happen in that place. Because you had just the guts to start to pray and to fill the earth, fill that school, those schools in the vet store with your prayer. And your prayer will become prophetic. The prophetic will be word. And the word will have authority. And the word will have impact. And the Holy Spirit will take the word. And it will put into those schools. God's going to help you. He's going to help me. In Jesus' name. By faith. Abraham did this. By faith that. By faith that. By faith that. Number four. Subdue it. Subdue. Subdue. Sons of God, you need to have authority on this earth. God made you to have authority. God made you to have authority. God made you to have authority. I don't know if you heard that. God made you to have authority. <clears throat> he wanted from the beginning to have you to come into a place and then what is not from him must bow. Just because of your presence. Because of your stature. Subdue it. Because you are becoming sons of God. Now, just on the previous point, just keep it that one there. We said, first of all, God wanted to walk with Adam and Eve in the garden. They were hiding with their issues. Then he found someone that was walking with him for more than 300 years that he just took. And it was... Enoch that walked with him for 300 years. Then when he wanted to forsake everybody and, everybody and let everybody be gone, slaughtered, just drown everything that is not from him, he found a man that walked with him. Tonight, Lord, let everything suffocate and drown in my life that is not from you, that tomorrow you can take me into a new destiny like through the ark you can take me through for a new destiny and then number four we find for the earth we find abram and god said to him walk before me and you will be blameless oh we can put the blame on someone you can blame somebody for your hurt when you got hurt or somebody disappointed you or somebody spoke behind your back you can blame somebody else and you know sometimes we can blame ourselves for a lot of things Yes, they did you wrong. Yes, you are doing things wrong. But there's the blood of Christ. That as you walk with your God, he will, he will help you. He will help you to figure out the things that are not from him. The things that you need to lay down. But just keep on walking with your God. And you will be blameless. That's what he tells God. He's saying to Abram. And then... Sons of God, Romans 8 verse 14, those who are led by the Spirit, they, they are the sons of God. Those who can stand and say, in the name of Jesus, be cast out. Yeah, and then the devils went. They, they fled. That's not the first definition of a son of God that we see. But those who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Walk with the Spirit. Walk with the Spirit. And trust God to know when you are with the Spirit and when not. 
When did you move with him and when not? When did you move with that laziness? Or when did you move with your culture? When did you move with your history? When did you move with your circumstances? When did you move just because you're supposed to move, because the leader said you must move? Or he's, he's expected of you to move. Don't think in such childish ways anymore. Become a son of God with a passion to say, I need to be led by the Spirit. Because where he is, I want to be. Where the Son of God is, I want to be there as a Son of God, so that the Son of God will be seen through my life. Amen? Stand with the armor of God. He has given you the capacity to stand. When the enemy is looking at you from far, he sees the breastplate of righteousness from God, the helmet of salvation from God, the sword of the Spirit from God, the the shield of faith from God. The shoes for the readiness of the gospel from God. The whole armor of God. I see the whole armor of God coming my way. I'm one of the devil. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm playing the role of, uh, of a devil. Looking at you. That's supposed to be the way. I know. There the living word is coming. Because through the living word you are having statues. Sit in heavenly places with Christ. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places and from there you're looking at your situation. From there you're looking at the giants. From there you are looking at the giants. One issue that David had, like we said this morning, telling the giant, how dare you come and challenge the army of God? How dare you? Where do you get the guts from? To challenge the army of God. Not God help me to face this giant. Lord help me in Jesus name. It's a big giant Lord. No. How dare you come. <laughs> Where did you get the guts from? <laughs> to challenge the army of God. Do you not know that we have a covenant with Almighty? Do you not know with whom I have a covenant? Let God arrest you with that. Amen. So that you can, where you go, you come in with stature. You come in with stature. And you, you're only there to bring the bread, man. You're only in the spa to buy a bread. You're only here to say hello. You're only there to... Do. David, the boy key, is only here to bring the food, the Kentucky for the brothers. The real soldiers. To bring his brother soldiers to Kentucky. And then he need to go back to the sheep. But because of his stature, and because he knew his God, he thought, what is this? <laughs> and let me just go and see, what is this? You know? I'm used to dealing with a lion and a bear. A lion with a bear? No, no, no. I'm used to dealing with a lion and a bear. Not because I love the sheep so much. But because I know who's my God. So Saul, with this, this giant, it will be just the same as with the lion and the bear. That's what he told Saul. I don't need your armor because I know who I am with God. Subdue it. Come into stature. Not with the armor that a king can give you. But the armor of the, the king. Stand with his armor. Amen. Yes, man. Yes, man. So we see in the book of Hebrew, once again, talking about all these guys, for the sake of time, all these guys, how they stood and, and have brought down kingdoms in this world. How kings and kingdoms had to fall before them. Because they came in the name of the Lord. And they got breakthroughs. And they gave. Wherever they came in. They brought breakthroughs. For God. For God. For God. Are you still here? Let me read it. Verse 32. And what more shall I say? For the time would fall. Fail me to tell you about Gideon. Barak. Samson. Jephthah. Also of David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms. Subdue it. Subdued kingdoms. Come into a place. And a kingdom is, is people who, who put themselves there and say, I have authority. 
And these guys came in that place and said, hey, basically, you have no authority. We have the authority. Because we are sent from heaven. Worked righteousness. Obtained promises. Stopped the mouth, mouths of lions. Quenched the violence of fire. Escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Became valiant in battle. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead. Raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yet, yes, and of change and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheep skins and goat skins, being destitute afflicted, tormented, for whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts, and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. Oh, how blessed from the Lord are they. I think the curse of the Lord is upon them. Maybe there's a major hell of an open door <laughs> in their life. Because of look what happened to them, man. Ish, they need to pray for God's protection. They were sons of God that understood what it's all about. It's not first of all about what is around me. It's about what is there, how fruitful I am, how I can receive, how I can multiply what is from Him. How can I fill the earth with what is from heaven? How can I stand with stature in a place and say, God, for whatever you want, if it's through martyrdom, then I give my life as a seed and there will be a harvest for my life because not with moaning and groaning and fear and all these rubbish I will kill the seed, my life as a seed if my seed must go in the ground through martyrdom then it will go in the ground through martyrdom but there will be a harvest for the kingdom I will do this as an honor for you and I will not curse the impact of my seed of my life on this earth by the moaning and the groaning and the negativity and whatever could come my way. Oh, that's people with stature. People with stature is all about him. Then you have stature. Number five, last one. <clears throat> have dominion. God has called you as kings and priests for God. Revelation 5 verse 10 says, And God has called us to be kings and priests forever with him. Revelation 20. Right at the end. Same. Eternal position and stature with the king of kings and as priests with the high priest, Jesus Christ. We see when God took Israel out of Egypt, brought them to the mountain and said, I brought you on eagle's wings. Where? To Canaan. To bless you with Canaan. No. To brew, I brought you unto myself. You will be for me a kingdom of priests. He immediately imparts destiny into them by giving them an identity. The identity I give you is you are a kingdom of priests. That means what? You will be kings with me as the king of kings. Priests, you will you will be in my presence. You will worship me. You will be focused on me. A priest is consumed with him and his presence. A priest knows his presence. The priest knows what's the difference between the presence of Hamar, so the presence of that what is from the world, and the presence of God. The priest knows how to act and react and respond to his presence. He has called you to understand that, how to respond to him in his presence. He has called you also to walk as a king out there in the name of the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. So I come to in you in the name of the King of Kings as a king. As a king, I come to you in the name of the King of Kings. And with that stature, you walk into your situation, into your emotions, into your soul. From your spirit, you walk into your soul. You walk into your thought patterns. You Walk into that temptation and say, how dare you come against me? I'm a man of quality. I'm a woman of beauty. How dare you come and think you can 
defile me. How dare you come and think you can make me call myself rubbish, that I'm not worthy of his love. I will not take that anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, my brother, my sister. We need to walk in this. Amen. Live as a kingdom of priests. That was when God took them out of Egypt. Then, in the New Testament, we see that. 1 Peter 2, 9. You are a kingdom of priests. Same was said. Same was said then. Same was said at the end of Revelation. A kingdom of priests. So at the end of the day, how will you do this? You can only be a king and a priest when number four, if you are a son of God. If you are a son of God. You cannot become a, a king unless through the son, Jesus Christ, the king of kings. You not, cannot become a priest unless through the high priest, Jesus Christ. So through the son of God, everything will work through the son of God. And for you to become a son of God. Because you are led by the Spirit. You are walking with your God. And so for eternity as a king, with the king of kings, you will walk with your God. As a priest for eternity, you will walk with a high priest. For eternity, into eternity, into eternity, you will do what the Father intended for you to do. So that he can have a pleasure in it. So that he can enjoy it. And that is to walk with your God. Amen. Church of Christ, walk with your God. Walk with your God. As you walk out here, you're going to walk with your God. Amen. Holy Spirit, arrest our focus, please. Arrest us into that, what Father wants to do in and through our lives. Lord, and as we walk out here, we declare in the name of Jesus Christ, Every man that had fear, stress, anxiety, and negativity, and temptation, all those rubbish, Lord, we leave it right here now in the name of Jesus. We walk away from that through the blood of Christ and through the mercy that you give us, Lord. We walk with you and you alone from this place. That's our desire as we want to be a blessing because you have blessed us to be a blessing. And God, with you blessing us, there's a responsibility, there's a challenge that you give us. With every blessing, there will be a challenge, Lord, but have mercy on us where we failed in the past. But God, with the blessing that you is giving us, for first of all, Holy Spirit, show us the intensity and the fullness of this blessing. But show us also practically how to give it to others. How must it have an impact on others here and in the nations of the earth? Thank you, Father, that we can be agents to pour forth blessing into the nations through you as our God and Father. I pray that for every man and woman in this place right now, and that you will touch them in a very, very special way, even tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.